Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel, thanks for tuning in this week for another update in DCS World from the Eagle Dynamics team, bringing you news and information that they provide to us and my opinions and thoughts on some of those things. Of course, as always, it's Prickly Hedgehog, so thank you for, as I said, tuning in again to this week's update. Let's take a look, we'll start with the Seital event, which is the, uh, what are we calling that here, <laughs> the um, Squadron Air-to-Air -air Leagues, sorry. I had to uh, get my head around that. The Squadron Air-to-Air -Air Leagues, which is... Uh, you can find the schedule and matches at The Merge on Splash One Gaming. All the matches are currently set to start at 1400 Greenwich Mean Time on Saturdays of each week. DCS World Events in conjunction with Eagle Dynamics, Wild Weasel, Apparel, and TacView. They're proud to announce Seital 2020. Whereas Seitak is an intense 2-3 week championship, Seital is going to be more of a uh, slow burn year-round competition based on all the excitement they had last year from uh, Seital year two. So, um, yeah, I think, well, am I reading that right? This looks like the second year, so I apologize if I've got that wrong. Anyway, all, all streams will take place on the DCS World Events Twitch channel, and if you're looking or if you're unable to get to that, then there's after-action replays available on YouTube, which will also be useful. Looks like a lot of fun. Looks like also some <laughs> potential for great humiliation as well. So, um uh, good luck if you're getting involved in that. Prizes and sponsors, those will be announced soon, but you can in the interim buy your favorite aircraft at the stay-at-home sale event right now, which is ongoing, and you can join a squadron and get into the Seitel action yourself if you so desire, according to the website. Now, the other big news this week, of course, is actually one that probably Warbirds fans will be pleased with, and that is the Focke Wolf 190A8. It's now out of early access. It is available for purchase and a lot of the bugs have been ironed out of that particular module over the last year and the vehicle or at least the aircraft I should say is available to you if you're looking for a more complete version. Uh, some of these sought after features that they have, a uh, great degree of realism has been implemented into it and this includes things like the engine, the startup procedure steps have been precisely tuned to take into account hot and cold weather conditions that require different priming techniques a great degree of realism there. Weapons over 10 different World War II bombs, including SD-500s and three types of cluster bombs with different submunitions, which have been modeled to accu accurately represent attack capabilities. Additionally, the WGR-21 rockets add the possibility for proper B-17 flying fortress hunting. And as we know, post-Battle of Britain, once... Um, the Allies started trying to bomb the German mainland in day raids. Uh, that was a not a good time to be a uh, Allied pilot. The casualty rate was absolutely horrific. The Focke Wolf itself, of course, when it first uh, emerged on the battlefield, was something of a demon for Allied pilots, particularly um, uh, pilots that had survived the Battle of Britain and then bringing out their Spitfires, the early variants, which were, you know, a pretty good aircraft, there's no question about uh, I remember reading New Zealand ace uh, Aldair describing that he raided the Spitfire over the Messerschmitt 109 in terms of handling characteristics and capability, of course it all comes down to pilot um, ability as well but the Focke Wolf was a different beast and uh, it was very quickly realized that we're going to have to up our game here the Spitfire that we have at this time is not going to be sufficient so that obviously led to the development of the ultimately the Mark 9 which was I think the most widely produced variant and obviously highly successful and a match in the right hands for the Focke Wolf but definitely a, a, a lethal piece of equipment and uh, yeah nasty nasty uh, aircraft so anyway weapons those have been uh, accurately modeled sound the entire lands soundscape excuse me not landscape soundscape has been improved uh, sound engineers recorded real aircraft throughout the year to bring you the most accurate representation on representation of flyby in cockpit and engine startup sounds available in any aircraft simulator that's a nice touch liveries a number of new skins have been added this gives more flexibility when operating under different condition uh, coalitions and inspir uh, inspiration for your own um, creative outputs if you so desire. A lot of bugs bugs were fixed with uh, new features added to the aircraft module. Major updates for cooling and oil systems. A jettisoned canopy can be repaired on the ground. The cockpit has proper lighting now. The circuit breakers and electricity consuming devices 
were improved for realistic behavior. The repeater compass was fixed. The armored glass color was changed according to real glass from the museum and the information from Eric Brunot. Uh, the training missions were completely overhauled into more digestible chunks. I might have said uh, Eric's name. Is it Brunot or Brunotti? I'm not sure, so I apologize there. Anyway, correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. See full changelog. Uh, there's a link there. I won't go through that. I don't own the aircraft. It's not one I have dabbled in. It is one I would be interested in playing with a little bit. I only own the Spitfire and I think the generic, what is it, is it the Mustang that you get as well with the Flaming Cliffs 3, so I don't have a, a great swag of World War II airbirds. And that is a growing genre within the genre that we have here, but uh, right now for DCS World, my own bent, I'm more interested in the, the jet aircraft. Uh, there's the rival Warbirds franchise IL-2 which I know a lot of people are also involved with. Um, I've got that, but I haven't played it all that much, so just time constraints. But I do enjoy World War II aircraft, and um, I just haven't gotten around to delving into this particular part of the franchise. That's just a personal thing. Okay, so with the Wolf finally out of early access, we look forward to further improvements, making the aircraft even more complex with the F-8 attack and G-8 light bomber variants. So that is exciting. There is a trailer there as well. Like I said, uh, if you go to the website, or at least go to the email, if you're getting it, the, there is access to the full change log if you want more information. Now here's one that is probably more interesting to most of us that are flying um, Western jets of the modern era, and that is the AIM-120 developer. Now the development report here says that last month they spent a lot of time on the AIM-120 missile, CFD research, in addition to our previous computation, which was primarily aimed at deriving accurate zero lift drag. We have obtained many f other aerodynamic parameters, such as pitching movement uh, and normal force coefficients, damping moments. They say moments here, damping. I think it, they meant to say movements here. To ensure realistic maneuverability, plausible control, and s uh, stability characteristics, we performed more than 200 virtual wind tunnel tests at different control fin deflections and various Mach numbers Deployment and angles of attack. Spoken. And there are Proceed some photos that you can look as well, Strike screenshots that they have taken shortly. from. Uh, computer simulations which look pretty cool. Uh, the flight dynamics for AMRAM are almost done and we will move on to the autopilot development as well. So that's exciting news for the game. For I know a lot of people have talked about that. So uh, the what would you call it? The modeling of weapons in the game. Remember last week they also talked about the modeling of ballistics which also went through an overhaul based on some information that they found with regards to the warbirds so the game is constantly improving these are good things and uh yeah i can't really complain too much about that there's some good announcements here well as i said earlier this week uh seems that every week really is a major change in the world that we are living in right now and like i said i hope you guys are doing well taking appropriate precautions uh encouraging family members to stay home where feasible we need we need to avoid contact with each other we need to let this virus kind of burn itself out a little bit and flatten out that curve that they keep talking about, which is basically the spike in uh, um, those people that are getting the disease. As we've seen in Italy, it's pretty horrific what's going on there because they have really become overwhelmed with the number of patients. So that has a, a real impact on medical services' ability to uh, treat patients, acute patients, and uh, makes it very, very difficult for the rest of us as well who may need in the end need services so you know take common sense stay home play some dcs and you're encouraged to do so uh, look after each other and you know do the right thing yeah enough waffle i hope you guys are doing well stay flying out there we'll see you around this is prickly hedgehog out for another update and i will continue to bring you videos as i can based on the current crises and uh, other commitments that I have. So, thanks guys.